Well, All right, then. So at this point, what we've got is our Pinterest account. Again, it is what you make of it. So the more you use it, the better. There's also a um, an app for it, iPhone and Android, Windows Phone. You should be able to get the app and also use it there. So you'll get your notifications quickly on your device. You can share your content from the device as well. But I find that uh, I like to share content on these networks a little bit more on the website because I have a full keyboard where I can write easier. And then when I'm adding a link from a website, it's easier to copy and paste also. But having it being mobile and having it with you is also useful because you could be at the store, take a picture of something, and upload it right at that moment. Uh, so I want to look at a few more things on Pinterest that, that are useful to you. So if you go up to the top right over here, if you go up to the top, if you go back to your profile, and then let's look at the gear, the settings. Let's go look at account settings. So we'll look at account settings. There's a variety of settings here that we want to look through because at the, at the beginning there's a lot of defaults that you might not like. So make sure you're under the settings here. This is where you can change your password, of course. If you want it in a different language, you can change that. Country. This is where you can change your business type again if this isn't quite fit for you. The name that appears up on the on the profile, which is not the same as the as the username. Privacy. Keep search engines like Google from showing your Pinterest profile in search results. The default is no, which is what I want. I do want the search engines to find my Pinterest profile and show me on the results. If you don't, you can turn that off. We sometimes show you promoted pins and recommendations based on your activity. Is it okay if we also use sites you visited recently? No. Also use more info from also use info from our ad partners. So what this is saying is, like the other networks, there's going to be ads. Uh, some networks are more intrusive than others. And here it's trying to say, would you like ads tailored to, let's say you're browsing a website on buying a brand new computer. Maybe you'll get some pins that focus on that because it saw that you were looking at, you know, you were window shopping for computers. If you turn this on to yes, then that will happen. That if you browse computer stuff, you might get pins on Pinterest related to that. It's off by default. That's not saying don't show me ads. You can't get away from that. You're just saying don't show me ads tailored to what I care about. Victor, I have a question. Mm -hmm. On search privacy up there, if you're trying to brand a product or service, would you want to make your Pinterest available? Like you can find people's Facebook. Well, let me, uh, let me answer that question as I finish this thought right here. Also, what's under personalization is this other one. Also use info from our ad partners. This one is on, and you can go in to learn more. And this one, again, is there's going to be ads that are going to come up. You can't click no, and you'll get no ads. This is about what kind of ads. So you can go here and just say, give me generic ads. Don't, uh, you know, don't tailor anything to me. The default is no and yes, but you can change that however you want. So backing up on this one over here, sorry I cut you off, but what was the question again? Well, the question is, if you're trying to brand a product or service, you can look on Google search and you can find some uh, businesses' Facebook page results, mm -hmm. or Google Plus results. Yeah. You can want to put your Pinterest results out there too? I, mean, I would. Asking, right? That's what it's asking, and I would. I would want to give people as much way as possible to get found. So I would not turn it on because it's the opposite. It's kind of like when we vote. A vote for yes means no, we will not fund that. You know, that kind of thing. Here it's saying no, you know, yes, give me privacy. So no, don't show up on the search results. So that's why we want to leave it off. But I would recommend if you're on all of these networks and if they have options like this, keep yourself being found. The, the more ways people can find us, the better. Related to this personalization, as you're doing searches on Pinterest, you can clear that out so that it's just starting from scratch. Here's where you can change that name, the address, 
the about you, the picture, self-explanatory, that's easy. Notifications. Here's then what you will need to decide how you want to get notified. And we've got a lot that we can choose from. When you're on Pinterest, get notifications from everyone or only people you follow. And I would leave this on get, get them from everyone. This means right now that we're not very famous, that we don't have many connections, I want to know about all the notifications. Later when we get more famous and we've got 30,000 followers and such, perhaps I only want to really know the notifications from those that I'm also following, not every random stranger. But in the beginning, because you don't have a following, I would recommend, yes, get your notifications from everyone. And this is while you're logged in to Pinterest, which is up here. Then you've got all of these that are turned on, and you can fine-tune them, either turn them all off, don't send me any email notifications and it warns you. I would say go in and turn the ones off that you don't want. I would say leave as many of these on as, as you're comfortable with, especially in the beginning so that you know what's happening. Notice it says get an email when someone pins your pin, when someone likes your pin, when someone follows you, and how often. As they happen, you might get 10 emails on one day. That might be too much, so give me a digest. I would recommend that one. Maybe put it on a digest. It's up to you. If you want to know things as they happen on your email, <coughs> leave that one on. And even more, when someone comments, sends you a message, they're all self-explanatory. When someone you know joins Pinterest. So if you connected with an email address, let's say a personal one, and you connected your address book, and then it'll tell you, oh, John just connected to Pinterest. Would you like to also follow them? You know, connect, make <coughs> connections. <clears throat> so you can turn that on and off. Pinterest has something new where people uh, can ask a question and you'll get a special kind of email that says someone asked a question on your pin. For example, recently someone posted a really cool picture uh, of someone in a costume and I asked, was that taken at San Diego Comic Con? And then they replied to me and they said, yes, it was at San Diego Comic Con 2012. So people can ask a question like, does that come in, in large? <coughs> or is that gluten-free? You'll get a special email that says someone asked you a question on Pinterest. That could be a potential client. So I want to know about that so I can reply. Quick question. Yeah. Um, going back to that once a day, it, would that then give you the results for the day in separate emails? And I know this is way far. I mean, you need a lot of followers. <laughs> It's one email that is going to be divided into sections that say you got these comments, you got these questions, you got these follows. With a link then that takes you back to Pinterest to see the full details. Now this is the one that you might want to turn most of them off if you don't want to be bothered with emails. There's a section here. We'll also let you know about Pinterest is trying to um, monetize. Eventually, probably they will they will go public, meaning they will get on the stock market, just like Facebook, like Twitter, etc. Pinterest, that's the one people are waiting for. When are they going to go public? I want to buy Pinterest stock eventually. Well, in order to be on the stock market, usually that's because you're going to make some sort of money for your shareholders. So from what I've been reading, Pinterest is going to implement more of a feature to allow you to track the prices of things. So imagine in your case, you're selling um, purses, and you put your picture up on Pinterest and people like it, and then it says that at the moment that purse is, you know, $100. And then let's say that eventually you have a sale that it's $90. Uh, those people that have liked it would get an email that says that purse has gone down to $90. So right now it's saying, send me an email about that. Now that's you, not your followers. Your followers, they can go in and turn that on and off. So you have to decide how you're using Pinterest. Do, do you want to know when that price decreases or increases? The default is yes. And again, at the moment, it's not quite out for the little people. It's going to be out there for Amazon and Kohl's and, you know, the big names. 
this price watch thing. Eventually it'll be out for the rest of us. I really recommend perhaps turn off stuff you might like because again this you might feel I'm getting all of these emails from Pinterest about junk mail. I take I kind of take it as junk mail. You can turn it on and off. Weekly inspiration for myself, I have it turned off, but you as a beginner, you might leave it on because it'll send you emails about cool stuff on Pinterest that might inspire you to borrow the idea. You might do the same thing. New features. Well, maybe that Buy Now button will be implemented soon, and this will send you the email when it happens. Tips and how-tos. That might be useful to you, or you might think, ah, it's junk mail. Turn it off. Invitations to give us feedback. Again, you might say, I like Pinterest, but maybe I also think this should be implemented. Feedback. So once you've set this up on your phone, you can set up the notifications on the phone. You can go there and fine-tune that. Social networks. Right here, you've got a space to connect your Pinterest to your Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus so that when you sh do something on Pinterest it can also be sent out to the other networks. Or you can log in to Pinterest with your Twitter account. If you connect any of these, it'll ask you to put in your password for those networks, and then I get the question, is that safe? I'm giving, every, I'm giving Pinterest my email account. Well, nowadays what happens is uh, there's a different type of authentication in place, which basically, if it asks you to log in, what happens is Pinterest takes you over to Facebook for a moment, to the Facebook.com page, and then on Facebook you log in. So you're logging into Facebook. And then Facebook vouches for you and brings you back to Pinterest, and Pinterest never sees your password. So it's not that we're giving Pinterest our Facebook password here. It's that we're having Facebook vouch for us so that then we have that connection. So it is safe. At the very bottom, if you say, I've got enough to worry about on Facebook, I'm just going to work on Facebook, you can deactivate Pinterest right there. And I think it gives you 30 days to change your mind. Let's say actually you learn a bit more, all you have to do is log in again and, and your stuff is still there. It doesn't get deleted right away. I made a few setting changes, so I'm going to select Save Settings. Yes? Mm -hmm. It doesn't let you connect to what? Um, yeah, we can see that during the lab time. Uh, I think this is just more for the convenience of being able to log in with one account, okay. because also I'll show you another way to, to more effectively, I think, spread your content to the different networks. Okay. So any questions on the settings here? Pretty straightforward. Is this like not from um, not from Pinterest, but I think from WordPress you've got a plug in there that when you add something to WordPress it'll go to Pinterest. So it's from that direction. All right, let's use uh, let's use Pinterest a little bit more and then I'll talk about uh, managing all of these networks. Um, there's there's the big search bar at the top we haven't touched on yet. You might have already started to do it. But up here is uh, another one of the powerful ways to use Pinterest. And a lot of what I talk about in, in this class, we talk about the nuances of each network, but a lot of the foundation of it is very similar in that, you know, don't just have a monologue. Follow other accounts, like their stuff, share their stuff. 
uh, and then search is part of that too. Search for content that you care about. Search for keywords. Search for hashtags. And then do the interaction, and that interaction leads to interaction. So up on search here, I'm going to start typing cookie. And it's starting to suggest, do you mean perhaps cookie recipes, cookie monster, cookie in a mug recipe, cookie Christmas? I'm going to say, okay, I meant cookie recipes. So start typing some some concept about what your business is about or what you want to portray in the business and then choose one of these suggestions. And notice that just does a search with those keywords and cookie and recipe. And it gives me all of this stuff here. So I see all of these cookies including corn chowder. That's not a cookie, that's an ad. Promoted pin. This is what I'm saying that it, you are going to see ads here and there usually as a promoted pin, which obviously you can just ignore. But one of the things you might care about is what are the big companies doing? Look at this. They've got a picture of their product and their logo, their mascot, and some phrase, warm up this fall with Charlie's corn chowder. Whereas other people are just doing a picture of, the, of that, and that's not a very appetizing picture. It looks a little greenish to me green food doesn't look that good. So take a look at some of the ads and see what they do and emulate what they do. Notice this is a very earthy type of photo, very inviting. It's got the fall colors up here and their logo. This obviously took more effort to set up. Photoshop. And then down here a title, everyone can do that. Some text, everyone can do that. Hashtag. Use hashtags. Use the hashtags that you're using on the other networks too. And a hashtag is basically an active link. When you click on it, it takes you to a search page result with that hashtag. What's also useful about promoted links or promoted pins is that they have activity. This has, this has been repinned 9,631 times. And it's got 858 favorites or likes. And it's got eight comments. That's what I care about, eight comments. These are, in theory, real people commenting on this stuff that I might want to start interacting with. And to see that, you click on the on the pin, and you'll see down here, uh, right here, Sammy Fine Jewelry says, this looks so good, thanks for posting. And people post stuff. So what you can then do is link to, uh, go to their particular profile, like Sammy over here, and then start to follow stuff, comment on stuff. And you don't always have to follow content that's exactly related to your company. Again, the 80-20 rule applies for everything. Follow Twitter accounts or Pinterest accounts 80% of the time related to your niche, 20% non-related. You have to decide how non-related it is. Here I followed the Peridot um, board. Perhaps I'll get a follow back from Sammy Fine Jewelry. Question. Yes. On the promoted thing, mm -hmm. is, that, um, is that tier level pricing? Do you have to pay for that advertising? Uh, honestly, I haven't needed to do promoted things in Pinterest. I've been doing it organically. The one that I do engage more in promoted is Facebook, because you're such a small needle in a big haystack on, pace, on Facebook. Over, I think it's like 1.2 billion people on Facebook now. So you're going to have a hard time standing out. On Pinterest, I think it's still small enough, cozy enough, 
Uh, you can go at it organically without having to pay. So I don't know enough knowledge to tell you uh, that answer. But obviously, Starkist has a lot of uh, a lot of clams to <laughs> to spend. All right. So uh, we're doing here just we're searching. The point of this is to in, to do the social, to interact with accounts, to get ideas of what people do. So again, depending on the, uh, the, the the search term, you might also get these interests at the top. Here I simply searched for cookie, and it recommends, well, maybe you mean snickerdoodle. You'll see more snickerdoodles than you ever thought possible. And then you could go in to just do a bunch of likes. That's one level. Remember, the higher level, more endorsement is that you actually pin it. A higher en endorsement is that you follow the whole board or the person's account. And then, of course, you have the ability to comment. That's another level of engagement. You took more effort to it than just click a simple like. Alright, so um, the main lecture on Pinterest, I'm going to wrap it up soon because I also want to talk about uh, other social media related things, but uh, any, any, uh, any questions that come to mind on Pinterest at the moment? Yes? Okay, let me help you during lab time for that, but any general questions here. How did you get that snickerdoodle right there from cookie to snickerdoodle? Did you just click on one of the... Yeah, when I, when I went on cookie, then it gave me suggestions at the top here on one of them, oh, snickerdoodle, okay. gotcha. which is just another way of searching cookie and snickerdoodle. Gotcha. Thank you. Right, any other general questions on uh, Pinterest? So again, uh, all of this stuff, I recommend you, you do it on your off time, a little bit uh, once a day, you know, spend 10 minutes just once a day or 30 minutes once a week or something. Spend some time doing this because the more you do it, the more the easier it becomes, the more second nature, the more perhaps fun and, and useful, useful to you. Yeah. And, and why did you say this more appeals to women is because it's more visual? Is that the reason? I'm not exactly sure why, but all the statistics and, and things that I read in the articles, they're mostly talking about that's the demographic that has a, a, appeared organically. I, I, didn't, I didn't want to say it. It's an Olympic all right then, so uh, Pinterest, you should uh, continue to work with it. Let me show you uh, some other things and then uh, get, we're getting close to the end of the day. Um, we have Pinterest, we, we managed to talk about Google+, uh, Twitter, and Pinterest, and you know other times we can talk about Facebook and such, and every other social network. How do you manage it all? Let me give you um, an intro to this meta social network tool that will allow you to manage all the networks at once. So if you go over to this address, let's switch gears here. Let's go to bufferapp.com.
There's many websites and services and software that will allow you to do this, which is basically manage more than one social network. That's what we've got. We've got three now. Even if you decide to only focus on Facebook and Twitter, you might think, well, it's annoying to log into Facebook and do my thing and then log into Twitter to do my thing. With Buffer App, we can manage them both at the same time. Let's go to BufferApp.com. We've got sign in with Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn or with an email address. We created a Twitter account in this class, so let's try to log in with let's log let's try to log in with that Twitter account we created. Now there's a there's a buffer for business. Let's skip that for the moment. Because like many things online, there's the free version and the not free version. This free version that we're going to use gives you the full capabilities but is limited into how much how many networks you can manage. Let's say you're managing three Twitter accounts. This will only let you manage one Twitter account. But you can manage one Twitter and one Facebook. Let's say you had three Twitters and two Facebooks. Then you need the paid version, which is the business one. We'll look at prices later, but it might be more than you would care to, to pay for. So I'm going to sign in with Twitter. And again, this is going to notice the address. It took me back to Twitter.com. I'm signing into Twitter. I'm not giving Buffer my email and my and my password. I'm giving Twitter my password. It's vouching for me and taking me back to Buffer. We're going to log in with Twitter. Make sure you spell your password correctly. Okay, so eventually you're able to log in and it says Authorize App. I'm going to click Authorize, and that bounces me back to Buffer. You want to add your email address there so you have full access. Exactly, it's going to use your Twitter account to manage your buffer account. All right, so uh, this screen, I'm going to skip it. Don't worry about this yet. At the bottom left, you've got skip this step. It's kind of invisible, so if you want to click that, eventually you get to the main screen here. So this is the point. I've got Twitter connected at the moment, and I can add other networks here. Google Plus, Facebook, etc. And then here I can create content such as sale this Sunday. And then I can uh, add to the queue. What does that mean? It says, in my case, this is going to get scheduled. I've got a schedule up here. This is saying, uh, put content in your queue and activate the networks and Buffer will automatically log in to all those networks and post your content on the days and times you tell it. So up here under schedule, by default it's going to post something every day, 8 a.m., 1 p.m., 6 p.m., 8 p.m. I can say, uh, well, post for me just once a week, Mondays. and at 8 in the morning, 8.23 in the morning. So here what it'll do is it'll log into all my networks and post once a week, Monday at 8.23 a.m. Or maybe Mondays and Thursdays, 8 a.m. and 11 or 2 p.m. Now the 
time zone seems to be wrong here, so I will put San Diego. So make sure your time zone is correct here, or they'll be posting at the wrong day and time. And then um, content. So this is going to be posted, sale this Sunday, 823 on, on the 30th. Because I told it Mondays and Mondays and Thursdays. So I can go over here to connect. I've connected Twitter, so it's going to share to Twitter. I can connect to Facebook, either a personal profile or a business page. Connect to LinkedIn, app.net, Google Plus. Now Pinterest is not listed here, unfortunately. So there are limits to this. But at least if you're running Google Plus, which we talked about in this class, and Twitter, which we talked about, and you're probably going to explore Facebook on your own, you can turn all three of those on, and then you won't have to be slaving away at your computer to post stuff to those networks every day. You take the weekend, you plan out what you're going to do that whole week, you come to Buffer here, and then you, there's going to be a button somewhere here that says turn on Facebook, turn on Twitter, turn on Google+. Then you start adding your content. Let's say I want to add another thing, and I, add a, I want to add also a picture. So I've added a picture and a link. Can you stagger buffer to have uh, Facebook on Tuesday, Twitter on Wednesday, Google Plus on Thursday, and the free version? Not on the free version. But the paid version. Yeah. yeah. So you can put in text, you can put in links, you can put in hashtags, pictures, add it to the queue, or tell it to post it right now. So let's say you got a great idea right now and you want to share this right now to all your networks. You know, up here it'll show you post on Twitter, post on Facebook, put a post on Google+. And then you can rearrange this. You can say make this one first, make it second, whatever. So Buffer App, I really like it. I use the free version. Nothing is to stop you from creating more than one free Buffer App account. Let's say you do want to manage two Twitter accounts. Well, you would log in with this Twitter account and with a different one. But usually we're managing one Twitter and one Google+, one Facebook for a company. So this is all that we need, the basic plan. If you need more capabilities, such as more networks and more times and all of that, we can upgrade to Awesome. Let's check out their prices. $102 per year. Well, when you're making the big money, then that's not so much. But I myself had not needed to, for any clients, create or get the awesome account. We've been able to do just fine with the basic free one. If you're going to do it monthly, you can do $10 a month. So that's the... Um, that's the website I wanted to talk about, BufferApp.com. They've also got an app so you could be scheduling your stuff on, on the go. And so in this class we managed to talk about uh, Twitter, Google+, Plus, Pinterest, and Buffer App. Any general questions?